Behavioral Health Project Director for the California School-Based Health Alliance. And I wanna thank everybody's flexibility and switching um, platforms that were um, and joining us with Zoom today. And we're glad you could be here for this hour of self-care. Um, and if you have uh, some a little time right now, we're gonna, uh, some props that you could use the, from home that could help in today's class are um, two blankets, a strap, which can just be like a, a bathrobe tie um, and a washcloth. Um, so if you want to take a moment to get those things. Um, this is uh, the fourth webinar we've done in our wellness series. And we want to thank Anthem Blue Cross um, for sponsoring this um, wellness series. Uh, some housekeeping, this what is being recorded and so we will be sending this out afterwards and hopefully um, it will serve as a resource for you to be able to share with um, families and caregivers and um, as something that we can continue to access for some stress reduction. Um, and uh, if you need to dial in, there's the phone number. Um, if you have any questions um, during the time or something's not clear, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask um, the questions. If, if chatting is easier, um, you can chat it and I will unmute and ask um, Zola the question. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about California School-Based Health Alliance. We, um, our work is based on two basic concepts that healthcare should be accessible and where kids are at, and that schools should have the services needed to ensure that poor health is not a barrier to learning. We do this through capacity building, technical assistance, and workshops and webinars like today. Um, and there's a link to the website where you'll be able to find the recording of this um, class afterwards and register for other webinars. Um, we do have a membership and if you become a member, you get conference registration, um, access to tools and technical assistance. And if you wanna sign up, there's the link. Um, and so now I would like to introduce our um, wonderful instructor today. We have um, Zola James. She is uh, the co-founder of Anasa Yoga and a yoga oh, instructor. One, five, one, zero, two, five, six, eight, two, six, seven, she eight, is a graduate of um, she, she's a graduate of the both the Berkeley Yoga Room three-year advanced studies program and the 500 hour level, emphasizing healthy alignment and yoga to develop body awareness, strength and flexibility, and a 200 hour founders teacher training with Maddie Azradi. She has taught um, yoga at the Girl, at Girl Trek, Stress Protest, Mills College, Civic Core Learning Academy, Alameda Health Systems, Kaiser Permanente Educational Theater, and San Francisco Wanderlust. She serves as a faculty member and volunteer organizer for Girl Trek, a national health organization to inspire African-American women and girls to live their healthiest, most fulfilled lives simply by walking. She enjoy enjoys teaching beginners to seasoned practitioners who are looking to refine their yoga practice. And she co-teaches the Anasa Yoga Series Intro to Yoga for Absolute Newbies. And we're so excited to have her with us um, today. And with that, I'm gonna um, go ahead and go off screen and pass it over to her. Hey, Zola, I think you're um, muted on the the fit audio one. All right, there. how's that? That's good, there we now? go. Okay, yeah. all right, <laughs> sorry about that, thank you. So I'm gonna give you a moment, if you haven't already, or if you um, didn't hear Jessica, um, you, we're gonna do a relaxation pose at the very end of our pose of our practice called Shavasana. So you might wanna have like a little towel or a little washcloth just to, and this would just kind of go over your eyes at the very end of practice. And then something that you can use um, as a strap, a yoga strap. And today I'm gonna to be demonstrating with my back rope sash. So if you have something like this, a jump rope could work and also a towel. So, and then the other question I wanna ask is, does anyone have any injuries? You can either unmute yourself 
or put it in the chat and just let me know if you want, if you have any injuries or it doesn't have to be extremely painful, but maybe a, a, an area of sensitivity or just kind of annoying you or um, if there's something in particular that you would like to, to work on um, to get a little bit more release in your body. So go ahead and unmute yourself or put it in chat if that is something you're dealing with. And I'm going to see if there's anyone. And then if there's any. Lower back and hips, got it. Thank you, Amy. Got it, okay. Anyone else got a request for lower back and hips? Okay. So our, our, so, um, our sequence today will cover that, okay. So, and then the other thing besides your bathrobe sash or strap and your washcloth, if you could have two blankets, two blankets. One we may, we'll be using, um, we'll be using it throughout our practice in different ways. And shoulders, thank you, Marlene. Got something for shoulders, all right. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move to my mat. And so every now and then, I think everybody, and nobody's on camera and that's okay. I think if you wanna take yourself off camera, um, sometimes I'll put on the gallery view just to see if my instruction is landing okay, that everyone understands, but it's okay to be off camera. And if something is unclear, just unmute yourself or put it in chat. Um, and then Jessica will let me know um, if you put it in chat and then if you unmute yourself, I'll be able to hear it. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna move to my mat. Here are my two blankets. I'm gonna have those nearby. I'm gonna have my washcloth and my strap nearby. And then let's just start standing for a few moments. This is a very basic pose and it's called mountain pose. And it is the basis for all the yoga poses. So just standing nice and tall, having the second toes facing forward. Imagine there's a thread coming from the top of your head and just drawing you up to the sky. And then see if you can just get a firm sense of your feet into the floor. You might wanna play with, just imagine you have like roots at the end of your, at the soles of your feet and just root down and resist your feet down into the mat or your floor and just notice what that does for the rest of your body. And just play with the, de de with the degree of rootedness and groundedness with the, with the feet and maybe even play with the idea of softening the groundedness of your feet. Like maybe imagine you're going to float up from your mat and just notice what that does to the body. And maybe the knees bend a little bit, maybe the hips release back a little bit, maybe the shoulders may come forward, maybe the head tilts back a little bit. And then once again, on your next exhalation, root down through the feet, let the thigh bones go back, let the abdomen area be soft. Let the arms come to the side. Let the shoulders drop away from the ears. And this is a pose called mountain pose. And this is a nice pose to work on any time of day um, because we're working the postural muscles in our body to keep ourselves upright. And we're gonna be referring to this pose from time to time during our time together in our practice, okay? All right, let's release that and we're gonna come down to the floor. And so we're gonna come down to the floor. We're gonna take our blanket, one of our blankets, and we're gonna just fold it. I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see. We're gonna fold it pretty tightly in a firm roll. And then we're going to bring it down to our mat. And we're gonna lie on our back and bring the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades are resting on the blanket and the back of the head is resting on the, on the mat. And then just take the arms to, the, to a T position momentarily and feel that openness in the chest. 
This is a nice way to kind of open up the lungs, let the abdominals soften. And so we get kind of, we get a little bit of a back bend. So I think it was Amy who asked about shoulder openers. This is a shoulder opener here, just gentle. See if you can bring your awareness to your collarbones and let the collarbones roll back behind the roll to the floor. A few more breaths here, just feeling the breath. Maybe breathing into the back ribs, breathing into the back of the lungs and breathing into the back of the heart. And then let's take the arms and let's scoot down just a little bit towards the feet so that the blanket roll is more um, supporting the top shoulder blades. And we'll bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet to the floor. And then with our next exhalation, we're gonna take the arms up, spread the palms, spread the fingers. See if you can increase the webbing of the fingers. Spread the palms. And then once again, just like you did in mountain pose, just reach the feet into the floor and notice what that does to the best, the rest of the body, how it opens up the chest and see if you can increase the back bend a little bit in your thoracic spine, that upper part of your, of your um, back body and press the feet into the floor. Feel the abdominal soften, feel the abdominal area soften. And see if you can straighten the elbows. Maybe take a peek and see if your elbows are straight. And then with your next exhalation, keep that width and the elongation of the fingers and begin to exhale and take the arms back behind you slowly with your breath. And before you take them all the way back, see if you can connect the arms, your fingertips to your lower back ribs and take the arms back even further so that the movement of the arms comes from the shoulders. See if you can keep the arms straight, the elbows straight, and really touch the wall behind you. Imagine you're touching the wall behind you and the hands may or may not drop to the floor. That's not as important as keeping the arms straight because when we work our arms straight overhead, it actually opens up the shoulders. So we're just going to wait for gravity to work in our favor, to open up our back body. And you might notice like on me, I have one arm going faster than the other. See if you can just make a slight adjustment so they can play with going down at the same time, bringing some awareness to the symmetry in your body. And if the hands touch, you can even bend the fingers back. If the fingertips touch the floor, reach the arms away from you still. And see if you can bring your awareness to your tailbone and lengthen your tailbone towards your heel, getting a nice length through the spine. Few more breaths here. And then exhale, circle the arms back around and then walk your feet towards the end of your mat and bring your head to rest on the blanket roll. We're going to pause here and bring your awareness to your breath. And just notice the sensation of your breath, the movement of your breath in your body. Because not only when we stretch our shoulders and we open up our, our upper back, we also stretch the lungs and it changes the quality of our breath. You might feel some more fullness, and also because of the slight back bend, we also may get, may feel the heart beat a little bit faster. Let's see, Jessica, can you see me if I'm lying on the floor okay? Yes, we can see you just fine. Okay, great, thank you. All right. Okay, and then we're going to move back onto the blanket again. And this time we're gonna do about three of them. And, um, we're going to take the arms up again. And this time a slight variation on that. We're going to take the arms up overhead again, straight arms, see if we can get the arms lined up with the ears at least. 
And then from there, we're going to reach our feet down into our mat, lift our pelvis, draw the tailbone towards the back of the knees. And the arms might drop down further now with that leverage of the pelvis lifting up. And if so, reach from there, from those back lower ribs to the wall behind you, straightening the arms, rooting the feet down into your mat. And then keep the, see if you can keep the fingertips on the floor where they are. If they come up, that's okay. But then slowly lower the pelvis, but see if you can lengthen the tailbone towards the back of the heels. And then reach the arms away, getting a little bit deeper back then, a little bit more extension through the spine, a little, a little deeper opening in the shoulders. And then once again, let's press the feet down, lift the hips up and reach the arms away from the legs as we press the feet into the mat. Tailbone lengthening towards the back of the knees and then come down, drawing the tailbone and the pelvis towards the feet slowly as you come down. And then the last one, just see if you can really move with your breath so as you Inhale, slowly let the pelvis rise up. And as you inhale again, let the arms reach away from your leg as you root the feet down. And as you exhale, allow the tailbone to reach towards the heels. Be there for a few moments, opening up the spine, opening up the shoulders. And then with your next exhalation, let's straighten one leg at a time, bringing, let the big toes touch, and then press the back of the legs down into the floor, flex the feet, and just lengthen along the floor. See if you can just grow an inch along the floor. And then exhale, circle the arms overhead, bend the knees, and let's bring the head back to rest on the Rolled blanket, let the palms turn up and let's rest here and connect to our breath, observing the inhalations and exhalations, experiencing the fullness of the breath from our breath back then and the opening of our shoulders. About five breaths here. Breathing into the back ribs, breathing into the back of the heart, Letting the movement of your breath drop down into your pelvis. All right. And then we'll take the right arm overhead and we'll roll over to our side stacking the hips into a fetal position. And take a moment and breathe into your back body, breathe into the back of the lungs. Breathe into the bottom of the lungs. And then use the strength of your arms to come up and let's come to sitting. Okay, just take a moment to sit quietly. Take a moment to let the shoulders release from the ears. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is something to open up the side body. And so if you do have two blankets and then a pillow could work too. And if you do practice yoga and you have a yoga bolster, you could use that too. So basically with our two blankets, we're making a yoga bolster. So that one roll I'm gonna put inside the second blanket and I'm gonna roll it again. And this is going to open up the side body, the side lungs. and see if you can make it nice and firm. And then we're gonna come back to that fetal position. We're gonna bring the outer hip to the blanket. And then we're going to lean over it to get this length in our side waist here, right here in this abdominal area here. And then we're going to take the arm up, the right arm up and turn the palm to face the floor. And then we're going to root the pelvis down into the floor and then take the arm overhead, grab the wrist 
and give yourself a little bit of opening in that carpal tunnel of your wrist here. And as you do that, press the pelvis down towards the floor as you reach the arm away from that outer hip. And then from here, we're going to straighten the top leg and reach it away from us, elongating the side body, opening up the side chest wall, opening up the armpit. And then from here, we're gonna take the let the, that top leg back about 30 to 45 degrees to the back of our mat. And then with our head resting on si inside, inside our arm, we're going to turn and let the breastbone lift up to the ceiling, the head resting into the arm, coming into another little bit of a back bend. Reaching through that inner top leg. And then exhale, bring the leg back underneath you. Come back into a fetal position and then slowly use your hands to come back up again. Take a moment to sit and just take, feel the difference between the side you just stretched, the right side and the left. And then we'll turn, I'm just gonna take my setup and take it the other way, or you can just simply turn around where you are in your place. So we bring the left hip up against the blanket, Bring our head down to rest on the arm. Be there for a few breaths, stacking the hips so that the left hip is right over the right, right over the left. Take the left arm up, turn the palm towards the floor and oops, circle it overhead. Hopefully you don't have anything in your way. And give yourself a nice stretch here. And again, if the hip is coming up, press the hip down towards the floor opening up the side, chest wall on this side, getting length through the side waist, the armpit chest, and the outer border of the shoulder. And then straightening that left leg, reach that leg away from your shoulders, and then take that heel ankle back, Reach that, and it's a straight leg, really lengthening through the inner leg. And then roll over, let the head rest inside your right arm as you take the breastbone to look up to the ceiling, head resting into the arm. And then coming back, drawing the leg underneath you and bringing the legs up. And then once again, let's come back up to sitting. And coming up to sitting, sorry, my earpiece is coming up. Just take a moment, feel the difference in your breath and in your shoulders. And let's interlace the fingers and just bring the hands forward and see if you can make the thumb mounds reach further than the pinky side of the hand. And then see if you can squeeze the upper arms towards each other, towards the midline of your body. And as you root down through your pelvis into the floor, take the arms up overhead, taking the upper arms in the direction of the ears, reaching and opening up the shoulders. And then bring the arms down and the switch the interlace of the fingers, take it one finger over reach the palms forward, thumbs forward, thumb mounts forward, straight arms and root down through the pelvis as you lift up. Still imagine you have that thread at the top of your head, reaching from the lower back ribs up into the palms. And then with your next exhalation, let the palms face each other, straighten the arms and then bring your awareness to the triceps. And then lengthen the tricep to the elbow, elbow to the, to the wrist, and the wrist to the palm, palm to the fingers. And as you root down through the pelvis and the leg, see if you can take the arms in the direction of your ears, opening up the shoulders, letting the breastbone lift up as you lift up through the crown of the head and the fingertips up. And then exhale and bring the arms down and breathe. 
and just take a moment to sit quietly, feeling that space and expansiveness, expansiveness in your lungs and in your upper body. All right. So we're going to move towards doing something for our hips and our legs. So let's come down. We're going to lie down. And now let's take one of our blankets and have it for our head. A little bit of support. So I open my blanket up. And you want to have your back strap or rope or towel nearby. And then we're going to come back and bring our head to rest on the blanket. And then we're going to take the strap and we're going to put it around the arch of the right foot. And then take the right, take the right leg away, maybe down towards the uh, left knee a little bit. And then with the strap around the arch, pull the, imagine you're pulling down on the strap to pull the arch into the foot. I'm sorry, pull the arch into the hip rather. So it's almost like you're pulling the leg down, elbows bend to the side to release in the lower back especially. So we don't wanna to go too high. So the leg would be less than 90. And just breathe in there, just letting that femur bone draw into the lower back, that safe from area. And you might wanna press, you could play with pressing that left foot into the floor to see if that does anything for you here. And then with your next exhalation, release the leg. Now change the direction of the action and let the reach of the sole of the foot reach up into your strap. Walk the hands up towards your foot and let the elbows bend to the side as you reach the sole of the foot up into the strap and the leg is straight. So if your knee is bent, see if you can straighten the leg. An action that helps with that is you think about pressing the top of your thigh bone back to open up the hamstring. So now we're opening up the hamstrings, releasing the hip. And then take the strap into your right hand and then take the left leg out to a position called Vata Konasana, also known as kind of a butterfly position. Take the left arm out to a T position and circle the leg towards you and then out to the side. Lengthening through the inner leg to the inner knee to the inner heel. And as you reach that foot into the strap, reach the left arm away from the right leg. You can give yourself a little bit of resist of the pinky side of your left foot into the mat. And then exhale, bring that back up and let the left knee drop in towards the midline of your, of your body. My left knee is hovering towards the back of my right leg. And we're going to take the strap in the left hand and the right arm comes to the side and we're just gonna stretch the outer hip here. Stretching the outer hip towards the outer knee, outer knee towards the outer ankle and the outer right foot. Good. And then take your right thumb and put it in the right hip crease and encourage that outer right hip to draw away. So I'm kind of, I've got my thumb in my hip crease and I'm drawing my thumb toward into my hip crease to draw my outer hip away from my right shoulder. And then with your next exhalation, let's release the strap, bring the outer ankle to the lower, lower left thigh, and then interlace the fingers behind your left leg. If your hands don't reach here, go ahead and grab, you can use your bathrobe strap here or your strap, whatever you have, you can bring it here. And this is to open up the hip. And notice if your right knee is coming forward towards your chest. If it is, just like that thumb was helping you in that hip crease, draw that right femur bone, that right thigh bone away. Yeah, away from your right shoulder, using your outer right ankle as leverage against your right thigh. And let the legs fold into the body. And again, you can use your strap here. Let's be here for about five breaths, opening up the hips. 
can flex the toes if you want to increase the sensation in the hip. And you can also rock to the side, to the left side, scoop the legs in and do the other a couple of times. That's kind of a, that nice rocking may be nice. So I take, go to the side and I scoop my legs in and then bring them back. And then we'll release. Take a pause here. Notice the difference between the right side and the left. And so now we're gonna get ready to do the left side. So we'll bring our left leg in, put the strap around the arch of the foot. And again, take it 90 degrees or less. Leg is straight, pressing the front of that thigh bone to the back. So primarily, we're pulling down on the strap to release, to get a release in the lower back. So we're pressing the femur down and I'm pulling down as though I'm pulling the sole of my foot to my, to my hip. And then with your next exhalation, now change the direction of the action and lift the sole of the foot into the strap and maybe press the right foot into the floor and maybe walk your hands up the strap towards your foot. Bend the elbows to the side, opening up the left hamstring here. And again, seeing if you can draw the front of that thigh bone into the back of that thigh, deepening in that left hip crease. And as you feel your hamstrings open up, begin to let your hands go up towards the foot and bend the elbows to the side so that your leg, as you get more and more space in your body with time and patience of these forward bend poses like this, the leg has somewhere to release to. If your arms are together, the, arm, the leg won't be able to re release. And so we're able to kind of use gravity here and also the leverage of our right foot pressing into the floor to release. And again, as you feel your left hamstring open up, let the hands walk up towards the feet and the elbows bend to the side. And then we're gonna take the strap in the left hand, take the right hand out to the side, and then come into that butterfly position on the right side, and then circle the leg to, towards you, and then out to the side, lengthening through the inner leg. The inner groin to the inner knee, inner knee to the inner heel reaching the right arm away from the left leg and the left leg lengthening away from the right arm. And then exhale, bring the leg back up. And then we'll take the strap into our right hand and then we'll let that right knee drop towards the midline of the body, take the Left thumb into the hip crease, draw that hip away as we take the leg over to the side. And I'm really, my hip is really tight. My hip is, I guess, tighter this morning on the side. So I'm just reaching, trying to, because my hip wants to come up towards my shoulder and I have my thumb here to help me release it away. And then with your next exhalation, bend the left knee, bring the outer ankle to the lower right thigh, draw that left thigh away from the left shoulder, and then scoop the legs in, either using your strap around the right thigh or interlacing the fingers behind the right thigh. And again, even though the legs are coming in, See if you can keep that thigh bone from folding in towards your chest and you can use it to press away, opening up that hip. And you can do those rolls again if you like. I sometimes feel like, you know, our bodies like rhythm and sometimes even with yoga, it's nice to just kind of 
rock, do a little bit of rocking. And then do about three more of those on your own. Every time, see if you can draw that outer thigh away. And then release and bring the legs down. Okay. Let's put the strap to the side. Let's take the right arm overhead. We're gonna roll over into that fetal position. And this time we're gonna to come to all fours. So let's bring the blanket more towards the center of your mat, that open blanket that you had your head on. And then let's come to all fours. And we're going, and let's curl the, to the toes under just to stabilize the legs and come to a flat back position. Spread the fingers again, like we did earlier. Make sure you're not dumping, but see if you can draw the sides of the navel up towards the front of the spine to protect the lower back. And then draw the tailbone back and the crown of the head towards, uh, draw the tailbone towards the wall behind you and the crown of the head forward. So come into a nice tabletop position. Reaching the palms down. And with the toes curled under, go ahead and just give the balls of your feet, give them a resist down into the floor. Feel that firmness in your legs. And the palms, especially the circumference of the palms, root those down into the, into the mat. Straighten the elbows. Feel the front of the body soften up towards the back body and the back body spread. Good. And now with your next exhalation, we're going to draw, we're gonna come into a little bit of back bend like we did earlier. We're going to bend, we're gonna turn the arm so the elbow creases face the fingers and we're going to bend the elbows and draw the breastbone forward and up. The elbows can remain bent. And then we're gonna draw the crown of the head down and the tailbone down. And let's do about five of those cat cows. Move and see if you can connect the movement of the cat cow. And this is cat, if you don't know, this is referred to as cat, even though sometimes I get them mixed up. But this is cat and this is cow. So cow has the back bend and the cat is the forward bend. And this is a way to work flexion and extension in the hips and the upper back. And after you've done about five, I'm sorry, three, we said we we're gonna do three, sorry. <laughs> after we do about three of these, we're gonna press back into child's pose. Moving with the breath. And then uncurl the toes and we're going to press back and take a little pause, forehead to the blanket, arms to the side to release the shoulders and see if you can release the shoulders so that the elbows maybe could have some support or supported by the blanket or the floor. And the forehead is supported by the floor and just give this, give the back body a little bit of a break here. Soften in the, in the hip creases, letting the front of the, the front body really drop into the front of the thighs. A good part of yoga is not just doing all the poses, which are called asanas, but also resting. Resting is the recovery period in our practice. It's a way, that's where the integration happens. That's where the change happens. And just see how much you can really soften here. And if this pose is uncomfortable for knees or anything, you can also use the other blanket. Now, if your hips are really high up like this, you can build up the height this way too. And then we're gonna come forward again find our reverse table, I mean, our tabletop position again. Lift up the front body, spread the back body. We're gonna do one more. We're going to come into the back bend here, into the cow pose. And we're going to keep that cow pose. 
And then just continually, you can have a little bit of bend in the elbows. See how much you can bring the breastbone forward and up, forward and up. And then from here, take your feet as wide as your mat beyond hip, oh, hip distance. Bring your hands to hold on to your mat. Lift the sides of the navel up. You still have that, you're still in that cow pose here. And then this time we're gonna come into a downward dog position, a wide downward dog. And we're gonna lift the knees and draw the tailbone back and up behind us. And then holding on to the mat, I'm drawing the mat forward and I'm drawing my feet back. So I have my feet on the, on the sides of my mat, the edges of my mat. And this is a wide downward dog. See if you can bring your awareness to the inner legs and let the inner legs reach back. And notice what that does to the abdominals in the lower back, especially that action, getting into the inner legs. Good. A few more breaths here, letting the crown of the head drop. And then see if you can come into a little bit of that cow pose here, maybe just a little, drawing the breastbone forward, drawing the tailbone back, drawing the thigh bones back, and then letting the head drop. And then bring the hands forward so that the palms are shoulder width apart and begin to walk the hands back towards your feet. If you feel your hands and your fingers coming off the floor, let's go ahead and fold that blanket up and let's have that blanket for our hands. Okay, so I'm pressing down through my feet. And if, if your hands touch the floor, you can put your hands or your fingers on the floor, but if they don't, have a blanket here and then press down through the fingers or the palms. And let's just really stand on the, in that mountain pose here with the feet, press the feet in. And see if you can bring the weight of your body so it's over the arches of your feet. So you're not hanging back behind the heels and you're not forward, but you're fine. You can even rock back and forth to see if you can find that plumb line of your legs. And then from here, lift the sides of the navel up, press the fingertips down, press the feet down, and then bring the hands to the hips. Find that cow pose again, breastbone forward, and let the breastbone pull you up till you come to the top of the legs, shoulders over the hips, heel toe the feet together. Inhale, exhale, take the arms up overhead, palms facing each other. And then once again, let's feel this mountain pose, root down through the feet, let the inner legs go back. Let the tailbone release down towards the heels. Lift up, really using that openness we got from the back bend or the side body back bend here. Touch the, touch the ceiling with your fingertips and allow the reach of your fingers to come from the lower back ribs up. And see if you can press your feet so firmly into the floor that you grow an inch. And then exhale, bring the arms down to the side and pause. And once again, let's revisit mountain pose, maybe rock back and forth. See if you can come onto the arches of the feet, right over the arches, crown of the head, reaching up to the sky. So you have a, a very fine silk thread pulling you up all the way up to the crown of the head. All right, and release. All right, so we'll take the blanket to the side and we're gonna take um, a wide leg position. So see if you can take the legs as wide as your hands. So if you're standing in this position, let's say you have the ankle approximately underneath the wrist or the palm. And just like mountain pose, press the feet down into the floor, you can let the knees bend and see if you can reach the fingers out to the side and let the reach of the fingers come from the center shoulder blades. And now when you straighten the legs, see if you can allow the inner legs 
to go back first to open up the back of the legs. And the wrist can come slightly forward, crown of the head reaching up. And then we're going to come onto the ball of the right foot and turn the right foot out. And we're gonna come onto the left foot, turn that in. And then with our next exhalation, we're reaching the fingertips apart. Let's draw this hip into the body. So if it's hanging out like that, see if you can draw both hips towards each other. And then from here, we're going to bend the knee coming into a right angle with that right leg. See if you can track that knee over the second toe and come up. We're gonna do that about three times. Just rocking, similar to when we were doing the thread the needle. And just see if you, and actually let's bring the hands to the hips and just see if you can bring that leg towards a right angle. So again, our bodies like rhythm. So it's just kind of warming up in that hip joint for those of you who wanted something for your hips. Tracking the knee towards that second toe, that outer right hip coming forward as you bend. Okay, now we're gonna hold the pose for a few breaths. Let's exhale, take the arms out to the side, draw the hips towards each other. And then once again, bending that knee, tracking it over the second toe, reaching back with the left arm, reaching the arms apart, about five breaths here, seeing if you can stay upright. And how about all that opening we did for the upper body, breastbone lifted, not pushed out, but lifted, collarbones wide, shoulder heads, not forward, but up and back and the arms to the side. And your gaze can go over that right hand. And then exhale, let's come up, bring the hands to the hips, bring the feet to parallel, pause here. And then we'll do the other side, turning the left foot out, turning the right foot in slightly. And just naturally our hip, our outer hip of the back leg is, want, is going to want to hang out. And if it does, just bring the hips towards the midline, like everything wants to come to the midline of the body. And then propelling yourself, whoa, off that back foot. You wanna get your balance. So that's why you wanna be on your feet. So press down through those feet for balance. Yeah, get grounded. So when you think about really getting centered and grounded, we really wanna come from our feet. Because most of those feet lift up, we're gonna, we're gonna crumble. Okay, reaching out from the inner borders of the shoulder blades, and then we're just going to rock. Let's bring the hands, let's keep the shoulders broad, and we're just going to rock. And notice that that knee wants to go forward. See, can you have that knee track over your second toe so that we get that opening in the hip? Let's do that a few more times. And then coming back up, take the arms out to the side, reach the arms away, and then bring that outer hips towards each other. And then we're going to bend to the left, tracking that left knee towards the second toe, that outer left hip coming forward, moving it towards a right angle, looking over the fingers. This is one of the foundational sequence of standing poses, getting right on top of the feet, pressing the feet down, building strength in the legs, building strength and flexibility in the hips as we lift the torso up off the pelvis. And then exhale, come up, let's take the arms up, let's bring the feet to parallel. Exhale, bring the arms down, let's heel toe the feet together and stand in mountain pose. And notice how the mountain pose feels different, what's, what's happening in your body? What sensation are you experiencing? Letting the crown of the head lift up, rooting the feet down, lifting up in the arches of the feet. And then let's have the feet hip width apart here. We're gonna come into a pose called Ukitasana. And I think I'm gonna show it to the, on the side so you can, you can be at your camera, but we're going to circle the arms up overhead. 
come into that back bend, lift the breastbone up like we did in the cat cow. But from here, we're, and the arms are gonna go back towards the ears, we're going to bend the knees and sit back with the sit bones. And you don't wanna arch in the back, but that action of the size of the navel coming into the body, we wanna protect the lower back, but we wanna get that back bend. And then up. Let's do, that's called Ukatasana. So swing the arms up and back, lift the breastbone, straighten the arms, lengthen the triceps up to the elbows, and then size the navel in, sit back on the sit bones, and up. And bring the arms down. Let's do two more of those. Swing the arms up and back. Like you're really opening up and bend the knees, breastbone lifted up, triceps to the elbows and straighten up and bring the arms down. And last time, circle the arms up and back behind you and see if you can draw the elbows towards each other this time, moving with the breath, taking your time, breastbone to the ceiling, and then exhale, size of the navel in, sit back on, on your sit bones, take the shins back, and then exhale, let's come up, and circle the arms down, stand in mountain pose, good, and now we're going to come into tree pose, our last standing pose, rooting down into your feet, getting steady on your legs. And so I'm gonna show a couple of variations of this. The first variation is just simply this. I take my, I turn my leg out from that thread the needle we did, and I take the to toes out and I balance. And if balance, if you feel like falling, you can just bring the foot down. If you're familiar with this pose, bring it to a, an area above the knee joint, and bring the palms together here. So either here or here. And be there for about five breaths. So it's like mountain pose with one leg, drawing the outer hips together, drawing the outer body towards the inner body. And that fine silk thread lifting out of the crown of your head. And after about five breaths, go ahead and release. And let's do the other side. Coming on firmly, so that all that energy of getting round, grounded and rooted in our feet becomes very important. And then activating that inner leg. So again, this version here, turning out in the hip, palms together, or above the knee joint, pressing the inner thigh and the inner foot towards each other. You're gonna shake because it's a balance pose and a core strengthener. Lift the crown of the head up. Good, lengthen that side body. We got all this length through our body. Five breaths. This is also known as a standing meditation pose. And after you've done five breaths, go ahead and release and come down and stand in mountain pose. And notice how this, how this mountain pose feels different than our very first mountain pose. Standing on two feet, feel the back of the toes, feel the ball of the foot spread, feel the arches coming up into the body, feel the, out, the inner and outer heel reaching down, the center of the heel reaching down into your mat as you lift the body up from the soles of the feet. And then release. Okay, so we'll come back down to the floor. And we're going to have us have our blanket ready for us. Just have your blanket nearby. And we're going to come into actually this have let's go ahead and have our blankets ready. Let's fold. One blanket this way, and then the other blanket 
on top of that one. So we have, it looks like this, like this. And just have that nearby. And then from here, we're going to lie on our back momentarily. Let's give the back a break here. And then begin to open up the shoulders, shoulder heads. So if the shoulder heads are coming up towards the ceiling, see if you can circle the shoulder head down. And then see if you can step onto the hand. Actually, let's use a strap, let's do this. We'll do two, a couple of, have your strap nearby too. So we're gonna come on to step on the hands if you can, and then see if you can open up the chest. And then if this is, might be plenty for you, but just like our Utkatasana and our mountain pose, we're gonna root down into the hands. We're gonna press the back of the arms into the mat. We're gonna soften the sides of the navel and lift up, letting the shins push back towards our shoulders. A few more breaths here, pressing down, soften the abdominal area, pressing the shoulders down, and then exhale, come down. And then take your blanket, now you can take your blanket, and we're just going to bring those stack of blankets underneath our pelvis. And once again, we're gonna roll our shoulders under. And actually, let's take the palm back. Let's lengthen the triceps here. And then do the other side. And then both hands down. So I'm trying to get weight onto my palm here. And then do the, and then do the other side. And then have, then do both hands. And then with your next exhalation, let's come onto the balls of the feet and let's roll up into a back bend once again, not too high, but just so that we can really get onto our palms and then rolling back down again. And as you roll back down, see if you can take the elbows towards the top of your mat and then release. And we're coming into this restorative back then. This is also an inversion because the heart is slightly higher than the head. And release here for a few breaths. Feel the weight of the pelvis down into the mat. So one of the ways to really resource ourselves during these chaotic times it's, is to get that sense of groundedness by pressing our hands into a wall or into a tree, pressing our hands down into a floor or firm surface is a way to help us regulate our nervous system. So you can see why so if people are not fully on the soles of their feet, really grounded in their feet, how falls can happen. And just sometimes what we do with the body, everything else, our mind and our spirit will follow. And then with your next exhalation, let's bring the thighs into the chest and let's drop the knees to the right to come into a twist. Nice gentle twist. unwinding the muscles in the back. And then we'll drop to the other side. And then coming back to center, let's bring the soles of the feet to the floor, lift the pelvis up. And this is where you wanna have your washcloth. So you can decide, you can either have some padding underneath the back of the thighs or you can take it away. Or you can open up a blanket for your head if you think that's going to be more comfortable. And this is coming into our relaxation pose. And this is where you'll take your blanket, your washcloth 
and you'll put it over your eyes. So if you have light come filtering through your eyelids, it gives you a moment to let the eyes release from the eyelids and away from the washcloth. And this is our relaxation pose. It's also called Shavasana. And as you lie there, begin to breathe into the back lungs. Breathe into the wisdom of your heart and let that wisdom radiate through your arms and your head. Breathe into the back of the heart. And perhaps take a moment to listen to the wisdom in your heart or just acknowledge your heart. And then drop down into the wisdom of your lungs. Breathing into the sides and the back of the lungs. And listen to what wisdom may be there for your lungs. Or just acknowledge. And then drop into the wisdom of the gut. Our source of instinct. And maybe there's something there. Maybe it has something to say to you. What does it mean to listen to our gut? Or just acknowledge it. For the instincts that it's given us. And then drop down to the wisdom of the pelvis, a source of creativity and power. And allow the movement of your breath to move so subtly in the pelvic region. And drop down to the wisdom of the legs and the feet that give us a sense of moving forward with our lives and with our days. And listening to what wisdom there is Is there some wisdom from your legs and your feet? And if not, maybe just an acknowledgement for how they've served you. And then dropping down into the wisdom of your bones, which give us clarity and stability. A strong source of stability. And drop down into the wisdom of the bones and deep down into the marrow of the bones. And what do the bones have to say? What wisdom lies there? All the way from the bones of your legs, all the way up to the bones that make up the skull. And with your next exhalation, completely surrender and let go any amount as you drop into the wisdom of your body.
with your next exhalation, begin to take fuller inhalations and fuller exhalations. Breathing in to the tip of your toes and the crown of your head and the tips of your fingers. And with your next exhalation, begin to come back to the natural rhythm of your breath. And when you're ready, begin to bend one knee at a time, bringing the soles of the feet to the floor. And once again, taking the right arm overhead and rolling over into that fetal position on your side once again. Take an opportunity to breathe into the back body. And when you're ready, use the strength of your arms to walk yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Or you can stay where you are. <laughs> That's another option if you're home. <laughs> all right, thank you all for being here. I hope it served you well and there's a recording of it. So definitely use that. We also have a recording of a, of a practice on the NASA uh, yoga website too from the intro class. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Jessica. Thank you. So, and I just typed um, the name of the studio that she was mentioning. Okay. That. So if anybody wants um, to go just Google that, it'll take you to the website. Um, and thank you so much, Zola. This is so lovely. Oh, really appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Have a wonderful day. Stay warm, stay well, and use your resources. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Um.